الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين وشكر لله We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, we glorify his sublime name We ask him to send blessings and salutations and peace Upon the best of creation, our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And his family and folk and followers, companions And followers until the end of time Alhamdulillah rab al-alameen That Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah He relates the authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In which he teaches us foundational principles of our religion wherein he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that that have taqwa of Allah be mindful and fearful and God conscious of Allah conscious of Allah and therefore act accordingly wherever you are, whatever your circumstance is. And the second principle, and follow up an ill deed with a beautiful deed, and it will wipe out the former. The latter will efface the former. The good will erase the bad. And then the third one, and treat all people with beautiful character. Deal with all, all of humanity with the best of virtues, with prophetic character and prophetic ethics and prophetic virtue. And that if we reflect on these three, that the first one, the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jalla, is that this is to implement the uh, injunctions of the religion and to protect oneself from falling into what is prohibited. This is the foundation of our faith. And the first level of taqwa is iman itself, is to have taqwa of kufr. And this great, this great grace of Allah for a person to have iman in their heart, iman in their heart, for them to affirm la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is the basis of eternal bliss. It's not a light matter. It's the basis of eternal salvation, eternal bliss, everlasting joy. A moment of which is unimaginable, an iota of which we cannot conceive with our minds. That subhanAllah, what a great gift. This is the outpouring of divine generosity upon the Ummah of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every member of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's as if they are uh, beneath a, a downpour, a rainfall that is falling upon everyone, a, a, a rainfall of divine generosity. But those that ascend and seek the higher levels of taqwa, the next level, avoiding what is prohibited and fulfilling the obligations, this is extending one's hand and receiving more of that divine generosity. Because it is the basis of not going even temporarily into the fire, billah, and higher degrees in paradise. And that the more, the more that one ascends in the taqwa of Allah, the more that they are God conscious and act in their behavior, outward behavior and inner uh, in, in the state of their inner heart based off of taqwa then they are they are extending their arms more and more and getting cups and containers to take this rain, to take this divine de generosity which manifests most fully in the next life but also in this life insofar as the divine grace is not limited to the, to the next life and this is why Ibn Allah he says is that our Lord is far too glorious and sublime and, and, and majestic that the servant should interact with 
uh, uh, on time payment and that the divine recompense is only delayed. No, the main recompense is delayed, but there is also a, 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 an in-time temporal recompense, which is the fruits of taqwa in this life. Whoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah gives them a way out, a way out of problems. And gives them sustenance and provision from where once they would not have even thought of, once they would not, they never realized that it could come from that direction. Worldly openings, worldly protection, all of these are the fruits of taqwa, the ziyadat of Allah, the increased blessings from Allah Azza wa This is why one of our metaphysicians, Abu Hassan al-Shadri, rahimahullah, he says, man farukan ma'asi fi zahirihi, whoever departs from disobedience in terms of their behavior, whoever departs from disobedience in terms of their behavior, wa nabadha hubba dunya min batinihi, and casts out the love of this life from their heart, from the dunya, that the that the heart is too precious to give to the dunya in terms of love. Dunya, the world, this life and worldly success is meant for the hand, but not for the heart. The the hand partakes of the blessings of this life. The hand, uh, we take the means to increase the blessings that we have in this life to 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 set ourselves up for success. Worldly success is not in and of itself a wrong thing. But for it to take over the heart, that, no, this is wrong, this is misplaced. Because the heart is precious. The ruh is precious. The human soul was made for the remembrance of Allah, for the love of Allah, for the recognition of Allah. It was not made for being stuck in the mud of this life. And so the hub of the heart is for Allah. It's not for the dunya. And so, نَبَذَ حُبَّ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ بَاطِنِهِ And then he says, what? لَزِمَ Jawarihi wa murat sirihi and whoever is uh, steadfast in holds holds fast to protecting their limbs from what is wrong and foul and guarding their sir. The sir is the innermost dimension of the heart, which is solely for for the oneness of Allah, for the remembrance of Allah, for the recognition of Allah. Whoever does this, man farak al maasi fi dhari dhahirihi wa nabadha hubba dunya min baatinihi wa lazima hitha hitha jawarihihi wa murad sirrihi. What happens? What's the fruit? Not simply otherworldly, but even worldly fruit for such a person. Atatku al zawaidu min rabbihi is that the increased blessings pour upon such a person from his Lord. And Subhanallah, we ask Allah for these zawaid. These extra, extra, extra blessings that the people of Allah have, let alone in the next life. Let alone in the ne next life. The main aim is the akhirah, but we also seek the blessings of this life. We also seek the blessings of this life. And these are of the fruits of taqwa of Allah Azza wa So, the, back to the hadith that we began with, ittaqillah haythu ma kunt. You know, have taqwa of Allah irrespective, wherever you are, regardless of your circumstance. On, in good days, when you're, when you're successful, when you're happy, when things are going well, have taqwa of Allah. Don't attribute those blessings to yourself. Don't attribute the, those blessings to your own talent, or your own strategy, or your own intelligence, or your own achievements. No, have taqwa of Allah in good times by ascribing the blessings to Allah. Uh, uh, Abu Bakr al-Warraq, rahimahullah, he says, Shukru ni'ma mushahadatun minna. Gratitude for the blessing is to behold the favor of Allah. Gratitude for the blessing is to recognize the favor of Allah, not the favor of one's own talents. If we're in bad times, taqwa of Allah azza wa jalla. In bad days, when we're in a bad mood, when success is not there, not apparent in our days, when we are finding difficulty in our lives, when tribulations, when we find tribulations or trials, when we're when we when we are really feeling overwhelmed in, in the times of stress, in the times of anxiety, which are, which is part of the of, of the life of this world. Whoever promised that dunya would be paradise? Whoever promised that dunya was would be paradise? No, this life is not meant to be paradise. We seek the blessings of this life, but we recognize its innate nature. The innate nature of the dunya is to disappoint. The innate nature of the dunya is to distract. The innate nature of the dunya is to uh, 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 create delusion for the person. 
And, and, and it's from the blessing of Allah that the dunya is in paradise. Otherwise, we'd have, we would fall in love with the dunya. It's from the blessing of, of Allah that the dunya is not paradise. Otherwise, we wouldn't think of Allah. We would just be thinking of dunya. It's during those dire times that we turn to Allah in distress. That we turn to Allah in distress. And so, have taqwa of Allah in bad times. What's the taqwa of Allah in bad times? To turn to Him and to not complain to Him. In other words, to not complain about Him. We complain to Him, we go to our problems, we go to Allah with our problems, but we don't do so out of objection to what He has decreed. We do not object to Allah. Uh, experiencing pain does not contradict rida ar rida billah. We're, we're human beings, we, we, ha we become sad, we become stressed, uh, Abu Ali al-Daqaq, the Shaykh of Imam al-Qushayri, he says, لَيْسَ مِنِ الرِّضَى أَن لَا تَحُسُّ بِالْبَلَاءِ It's not from contentment with Allah that you, you don't experience the, 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 the pain of, of tribulation. وَإِنَّمَ الرِّضَى أَن لَا تَعْتَرِدْ عَلَى الْحُكْمِ وَالْقَضَاءِ But rather, contentment with Allah is that you do not object as to the, to the decree of Allah, to the ruling of Allah. Oh Allah, why did you do this to me? No, we have respect with Allah, we have etiquette with Allah, adab with Allah, Azza wa Jal. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu It's also from taqwa of Allah in those difficulties to make dua to Allah. A dua mukhul ibadah, the Prophet taught Sallallahu <coughs> Dua is the very essence of worship. It's the very marrow of devotion. We turn to Allah in the remembrance of Allah in the difficult times. Hasbun Allah wa ni'man wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and the best one to rely on. حسبنا الله حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم الله is my sufficiency and the the what the, the the relief from the trial itself is not my sufficiency Allah alone is my sufficiency and so when the relief comes I go to Allah in gratitude I don't just stop at the relief but I go to the giver of relief شكر النعمة مشاهدة المنا gratitude for the blessing is to behold the divine favor. And so irrespective of where we are and our circumstances, we ha the, the, what is the Prophet teaching us? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ittaqillah. Have taqwa of Allah, irrespective. Many people, when, when, when people harm them, when they're harmed by, by other people, this is when the taqwa goes out the window. This is when it's time to get back at them. This is why people, when, the, when tests happen, you know, what's the state of our character when, when we're mistreated by others? What's the state of our character? What's the state of our remembrance of Allah? You know, people, there's people that they have the best character and, 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 and they're, they're kind and they're gentle and they're generous. But then there's a nasty divorce and it's all out war against the former spouse. You know, just the ugliest way of, of, of uh, ending a marriage because it's time, it's payback time. And this is the Now have taqwa of Allah wherever you are. Not just in good times, not just when people are nice. No, when people are rude or if they hurt us, then we have to have taqwa of Allah. We don't trans transgress the hudud of Allah just to get back, just to win in that moment. We have to ask ourselves, what's the state of our recognition of Allah in the most difficult of circumstances? And then the second part of the hadith, that وَأَتْبِعِ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا And then follow up the ill deed with the beautiful deed and it'll efface it. What is one of the wisdoms of this statement that the Prophet is teaching us وسلم, is that we're not infallible. Is that as much as we try to safeguard ourselves from what is wrong, that we will slip, we will err. The Prophet said وسلم, that that all human beings, besides prophets, والسلام, all non-prophets are, are, are going to err, are going to sin, are going to slip. But the best of those are those that return to Allah. And so this is the first hasana when we make a mistake. When we commit a wrong, when we fall into sin, when we fall into, when our faults are manifested, the first hasana that we must do, which is obligatory in that situation, is tawbah to Allah. Is to make repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is why there's a difference between the sayi'ah happening despite ourselves, our slip into wrongs, versus al-israr 
is persisting in sin. What is contradictory to the state of a true mu'min is persisting in sin. This is inadmissible. This is something we have to get rid of. If we find ourselves persisting in wrong, then we have to make tawbah such that our wrongs are our slips alone. They're not something that we are consistent in. Right? Imam al-Janayid rahimahullah was once asked, كيف السبيل إلى التحقيق? What is the path to be realized in, these prophetic, in this prophetic way, in these prophetic teachings? And the first thing he says, بِتَوْبَةٍ تُزِيلُ الْإِسْرَارِ By a major tawbah, repentance, that does, does away with persistence in sin. This is what is very gross for, for the believer. But our slips are going to happen. And then we must make tawbah for each slip. And tawbah, what is tawbah but remorse in the heart and resolve to not fall, to, to do it again. To stop the sin, to have remorse in the heart and to make a resolve not to do it again. This is, a, this is the hasana, the first hasana that effaces the sin. It erases it from the book of deeds. And this presupposes introspection. A person cannot make tawbah for their wrongs unless they are cognizant of their wrongs. Which is why one of the mo most important foundational traits of a believer is to be someone that is vigilant in monitoring themselves. Not content with the way we are, but concerned with the way we are. The believer is not content with themselves, himself or herself. The believer is concerned. I need to continue to, to work on myself. Ibn Ta'ala says, Aslu kulli ma'asiyatin wa shahwatin wa ghaflatin arrida an nafs The basis of every act of disobedience and every time of heedlessness and inattention to Allah and every ma'asiyatin wa shahwa and every vile passion, misplaced passion, misplaced appetite is what? Arrida an nafs To be content with oneself. To be satisfied with the way we are. Wa aslu kulli and the basis of every act of obedience and every time of remembrance of Allah when we're paying attention to the divine and ifa and the basis of every uh, uh, t time when we have dignified restraint when we have enough modesty to restrain ourselves from foul appetites what's the basis of that of every single one to not be content with oneself for you to not be content with yourself. And even if you kept the company of a scholar that was satisfied with himself, a self-satisfied scholar, there's no such thing. That obviates them being a scholar. What knowledge does a, does a, does a scholar have if they're content with themselves, if they're self-satisfied? And what ignorance does the, does the ignoramus really have if they're dissatisfied with themselves? Well, that's the true person of hikmah. That's the true person who understands the sunnah. Even, even if they can't quote much of the Qur'an or much of the hadith or much of our tradition, even if they haven't sat with scholars and read books with scholars, even if they haven't, you know, uh, uh, indicated how intellectually formidable they, they intellectually intellectually formidable they may be or may not be, but they are true scholars. They have true aim if they are people of introspection, dissatisfaction with the ego, and genuine repentance to Allah. We ask Allah Taala for tawfiq in this. And so returning to the second principle of this prophetic hadith Follow up the ill deed with the beautiful deed And it will erase the former It will erase the bad deed And this is why the, another meaning of this Is that the person is less susceptible to committing it again Because true remorse and true tawbah makes one disgusted with their slip. 
And so the erasing is not just of that specific past wrong, but future similar wrongs. The person is less able to do that wrong when they make genuine toba. This is why uh, Bundar ibn Hussein, he was one of the main students of Abu Bakr al-Shibli, and he was a great Shafi'i Imam of Azerbaijan. He was, he was a Faqi and Usuli of the Shafi'i school. Bundar ibn Hussein, rahimahullah, he says, Man haraba, man haraba min al-dhunub, harabat minhu. Man haraba min al-dhunub, harabat minhu. Whoever flees from sins, sins flee from him. Whoever flees from sins, sins flee from him. Allah Ta'ala replaces the appetite uh, for those sins with a halawa, with the sweetness in the <laughs> obedience of Allah, with the sweetness in the remembrance of Allah, with the sweetness in the company of the people of Allah. And that sweetness is far, far greater than whatever pleasure was derived in the sin. But the key is to have the strength to, to turn a chapter in one's life, to have the strength to give up with that sin, to have the, 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 the wherewithal and the inner strength to say, I'm done with this wrong. There's people that have addictions to sins. There's some of our young people that have gross addictions to sins. And we have to teach them that it's a path that leads to nothing but pain, not only in the next life, but in this life as well. There are certain addictions, internet addictions, that don't allow a person to have a functional marriage. They destroy one's ability to enjoy intimacy with one's spouse. But if a person has the strength to, 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 to manfarat al ma'asi, to make hijrah from that wrong, and to give it up forever, then Allah Ta'ala will replace the sweetness of uh, one's marriage and other blessings in, in one's life, let alone the remembrance of Allah, that far, far outweigh that sin. We have to have a good opinion of Allah. مَنْ حَسَّنَ ذَنُّهُ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ فَتَحَ عَلَيْهِ بَابَ الرَّحْمَةِ Abu Sulaiman al-Dariyani says, whoever has a good opinion, opinion of Allah, Allah, will, Allah has already opened the floodgates of His mercy to them. Have a good opinion of Allah if you're struggling with the addiction. Have a good opinion of Allah if you're struggling with the sin. Have a good opinion that Allah Ta'ala will take care of you and give you greater pleasure in His remembrance, greater pleasure in the, in the halal blessings of this life than you ever might have found in the wrong. This is part of the effacement of the wrong, past wrong as, as well as future wrongs. It's gone, it's erased. A new chapter in your life and you're a new person. And then you have the illumination of the prophetic support you have the illumination of being someone that the Prophet will be proud of on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah to see Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have the illumination that when you see him on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will receive you with his blessed arms. He will say, I'm proud of you, that you had the strength to do that. And what about that pleasure compared to whatever pleasure is in the sin? Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi. No, rise up to be true ambassadors of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and get out of these vile things. And what's the third thing of the hadith, the third principle of the hadith? وَخَالِقِنْ nas بِخُلُقٍ hasan. Have beautiful character with everyone. Be universal in your mercy. خَالِقِنْ nas بِخُلُقٍ hasan. Treat all people with beautiful character. Be universal in your generosity. Be universal in your compassion. Be universal in your goodwill, be universal in your forgiveness, be universal in, in, in any good that you can muster in your heart and express through your limbs. Give it to everyone. Be a sign of God for people. Be someone that when people are distressed, you are there to serve them. And they say, you not only help me with my problem, but you saved my faith. Because I know you're a person of, of God consciousness. And for you to come and help me in this, in this difficulty, it, not, it, not, it made me recognize my Lord. The hadith says there are people there are keys to the remembrance of Allah. When they are but seen, Allah is remembered. Why? Because part of it is they have such gracious character. Such gracious character. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of prophetic mercy, of prophetic compassion 
of people who follow the sunnah of consistent tawbah, asking Allah for forgiveness in the morning and the evening, working on ourselves to perfect and ascend in our God consciousness, in our taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal, in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, morning and evening, day and night. Allahumma inna nasaluka tawfiq wal ikhlas wa dawam al ni'ma wa husn khitam Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hiyya lana min amrina rashada اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية المعافاة هم في الدنيا والآخر ولكل مسلم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلب الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاءة نعمتك وجميع سختك هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم مبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الرمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم كثيرة والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة